Hey, it's Don, the Auction Professor. Today, I wanted to talk about our mainstays, our bread and butter of our business. I get this question asked a lot. What pays most of our bills? For us, it's the, say, $10 to $20 items. We sell a bunch of those items across the board. Back in the day, uh, book scanning wise, your bread and butter, the part you made most of your money on, again, was five to $10 items. You sold those constantly over and over and over again throughout the day, every day. That's how it worked back when we used to scan books. Now with the storage fees and all of that aspect of it, those cheaper books aren't worth messing with for us anymore anyway, and it's not worth all the other hassle. So the items that we sell the most of these days are the collectibles and things along that line. We sell a bunch of them day in and day out. And it's stuff that we've paid almost nothing for. And in many cases, we don't pay really anything for, or it's paid for because we bought it in a big bulk lot. And we sold a few items and paid for everything with just one or two quick sales. That's how our business runs. That's how we've done it for many years. We do switch things up and such forth. But let's go show you some of the items that uh, make most of our money right now. So as I said, my bread and butter are these cheaper items. Now this one went for 25 bucks plus shipping. Everybody pays for shipping when they buy from my store. There's very, very few items out of everything we sell that ever get free shipping included. Now, sometimes somebody will make me an offer and ask for shipping included at that. I may take it, depending on what the offer is. But 25 bucks. I've sold three of these. This is the cheapest one I have sold and probably the lowest I would go. I sold a bunch of these for 30 and 40 bucks. I had several lots of these. These are just cheapos. I paid a couple bucks for a huge bag of Mark stuff. We've gotten two or three hundred dollars back from that one bag. Most people look at these and think they're just junky, cheap plastic toys. I still have two left, mind you. Now here we go with a yearbook. This is a local yearbook from the 90s. Most of these type will go fairly well. I try to stick to the newer ones or ones with somebody important in it. This one went for 30 bucks. This is just one of those things I pay a dollar, maybe two at most on most any yearbook that I buy. Yearbooks make us money all the time. We rarely have any trouble selling a yearbook. Most of them will sit for a little while, but they always seem to sell. So I do buy bunches of these sorts of things. They're readily available. You can even find them at thrift stores in many occasions. Again, 30 bucks plus they paid for shipping. Now here's a paper label for a roller skating rink. I sell quite a few of these. This one did go for $25.88. I've got about a quarter into it because I bought a whole bunch of paper items for about a quarter a piece in a bulk lump sum. I bought hundreds of pieces of paper, not necessarily labels like this, but advertising pieces in general. So excellent score here, 2588, as I said. So again, all of these items I'm showing you are stuff I get readily. I get them cheap. They sell fairly well, and I make a good profit on them. But it's nothing spectacular for most of what we sell. They're still very interesting, unique, graphically appealing like this one here. This is Levin Sci-Fi Fantasy Pulp like, um, I guess, Digest, you could call them, magazines. I've got just a couple bucks in the entire stack of these. They're all vintage and sci-fi and fantasy. Um, rather interesting assortment here. Nothing spectacular, but I got 30 bucks out of them, plus shipping. So, you know, I, I can't complain at that at all, because I'm still making 20-plus bucks profit after everything is said and done. And I do this all day long. We'll sell $20, $30, $50, $60, and then... Every, say, 10 or 15 items we sell will be a $100 plus item. Some certain percentage will be a $1,000 item. Things along that line are routines when you sell and have vast amounts of quantity of items up. Now, this doesn't work for everybody. You can't rely on cheaper stuff all the time. You have to build up this. These are easy to list. I've got employees. You can list 20 to, say, 30 listings in an hour easily depending on what you're listing. Most of these are paper, like a postcard here I've got pennies into. We took $12.50 on this one. It takes nothing to scan these in the duplex scanner. Both sides of the postcard are scanned at the exact same time. It's like two or three seconds to drop a postcard through the scanner. Depending on your DPI, you can lower that to less than a second to do one single card. It just shoots them through. 
We do have employees, as I said, though, so it is a different stake than many people. But this stuff sells routinely. This one went for fifty-six twenty-five. It's a Christmas card and an advertisement as well. It's got some sort of elf holding a Christmas tree, and this is the Great Eastern Tea Company. Rather interesting, unique. These are about the size of, say, a greeting card of some sorts. So 56 bucks. Nothing spectacular. Not going to make or break it, but this is the type of thing that pays our bills that we sell over and over and over again. A few CDs. Um, I threw these up here because it's pretty well flooded anywhere else I've looked. And I've got a used one that I didn't want to have to mess with selling separately because it just wasn't worth it. So I'll lot things up many times and I'll stick them up here on eBay. Some of these would go up on Amazon also. So I did take 20 bucks plus shipping on these. I've got a quarter a piece. I bought a mess of CDs on an average price of a quarter into them. So again, selling CDs all day long is no big deal. 10, 15 bucks a pop. Who cares? You've got a ton of them. You've got nothing into them. They're easy and quick to list. Now here's a brochure. This is a tiny one, very tiny. It's only like uh, four inches tall by about two inches across. I listed it was up for about four hours. I took 20 bucks on it. It's just a three-sided piece of paper, basically, that folds. It's for a movie studio for the Pacific Electric with a Mount Low trip, the observatory as well. Rather interesting piece. Now here's a map, like a folder map from the 1893 World's Fair. Rather interesting piece. It has a cover to it. It's from the Johnston Harvester Company, dated 1893. Now this is the most important part of it. These maps, it's actually a layout of the entire fair and shows you where everything's at. Very scarce. This is from the time of the World's Fair, so it's worth more than just some modern day junk. It's not a recreation. This is the real deal. It says what it is. It's dated 1893. A real nice piece here. And I sold it for 60 bucks. Again, nothing spectacular, but this is the stuff that pays our bills. It doesn't take many to add up to hundreds of dollars at a time. So here's another paper label. I can buy these in bulk from old advertising companies and distributor companies and things along that line that are going under and things. Nothing spectacular, nothing very high on this one, but we sell a bunch of these. So it's the fact that we sell many of them. The bread and butter, the, the mass amount of stuff is in these lower price range. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 bucks. That's where the majority. After that, then we count them in a different aspect of it. So another brochure here. This one was up again, maybe six hours. I sold it for $27.50. We went back and forth. I wasn't going to give it away. I can't knock it. California stuff always goes for us. Now here's a magazine. I paid like a quarter for a bunch of these. It had some staining on the top up here. Maybe it's an ink spill or something, but there was some damage up on the top left. I took $12 plus shipping on this. Again, I've got a quarter into it. No big deal. Magazines sell fairly well for us. Now, I showed this out on a haul, this one here. Uh, it's actually got damage to it, and I'm really surprised that it sold for 25 bucks, just like this. I've got a dollar into this. I bought a bunch of dolls for a dollar a piece out of a junk bin, and it had damage, as you see here. Now, this is something that could be repaired. Uh, people will take gesso and buff it down and do multiple layers until it's filled in. It is doable, um, nothing spectacular, but that is something you can do, and you can actually repair these if you wish. Again, 25 bucks on this. Now, here's a couple magic tricks. You put a coin in, you move the cardboard or something, and it does a trick of some sort. Not in the best condition. I settled on 20 bucks on these. I've got like a nickel or something into these. Maybe it was 20 for a dollar or something out of a junk bin. So these don't look like much to most people. Most people will just look at these. They're really small. They're just a couple inches tall. You can kind of get the size idea here from the dime or penny that would have fit into those slots. So again, 20 bucks, nothing into it. Quick sale. Wasn't up all that long. So fairly happy with that one. Now here is a very interesting promotional advertising card anthropomorphic pigs for the Swift and Company, which is still around today, uh, for lard. Um, it's an engraved card on the back, rather interesting, very well done, steel plate engraving or copper plate maybe at this point, I'm not really sure. This could date to about 1870s, but 1880s is very safe on this one. This sold for 50 bucks, so again, nothing super spectacular. 
it's easier to sell this stuff than most anything that we've had to deal with in the past. I've done clothing. We've done books. We gave up on clothing. Around here, most of the good stores for clothing either auction off or went under. All the savers are done. Goodwill auctions off. There's just not the sourcing to, to get that stuff around here. So I'm glad we've went this route. We've actually increased our margins and our sales across the board for doing that. So this is the bread and butter. This is what makes our day, selling a bunch of these day in, day out, 24-7, 365 days a year. These little cheaper stuff sell for us all the time. Now here's a record again, a dollar or less for every record. This is a specific World War II, praise the Lord and pass the ammunition, the Southern Suns. It did sell for $33.75. We put some on markdown. I don't do promotions anymore. We do just fine by marking them down. Again, I mark mine up higher than I expect to get out of them. So if I expect to get, say, 15 or 20 bucks, I'm going to put it up well higher than that so I have some room to play with it. Not every item is done that way. If the item only has a benchmark price, say 20 bucks, I'm going to keep it in that range because there would be no sense on earth in pricing something overboard. You just have to know which type of items you need to mark up or can mark up. It all depends on your philosophy, whether you don't mind it sinning or you want to blow it out quick. But again, these are the bread and butter. They sell all the time and constantly. Now, the next one here is a postcard from Italy from the 1930s or 40s. This is a bring back from a USGI after World War II. It did sell for $20.62. I bought a huge lot of stuff. I've got pennies into this. Bread and butter, as I said, all of these are bread and butter. Postcards are bread and butter. We sell them on many platforms, multiple platforms. You can sell most everything that I have, whether it be Etsy, whether it be your own site, whether it be Amazon, or you're doing like hip postcards, hip comic books, or any of that kind of stuff. There's many platforms to sell these on. You can increase your exposure. These can be your bread and butter if that's what you're looking for. You just got to know the markets and know what's the best ones to get. Now here's some Dresden, and I've talked about it many times. I've got some Christmas videos on the Art Professor, my other channel, which shows you how to make some sorts of recreations on some of these early Dresden-style items. This one went for $20. It's actually two of them. One's damaged, and it's identical of the other one. So pieces, you're basically getting one and the parts of another one. So 20 bucks, I'm fine with that. It's nothing special. I've got, again, pennies under this. I bought a paper collection from an old advertising collector, and there was a bunch of these sorts of items in there. I've got dozens of them. If you're in my Patreon group, you've got to see some of the ones that chances are I haven't shown anywhere else. I do have dozens and dozens of these sorts of things. They're rather interesting and unique. Dresden refers to the area they were printed in more than anything else. Next one's a National Geographic. I saw at least one or two of these every single week, it seems. Now, I literally have nothing into this. Now, I donated to a church because these were free. All the magazines were free there. So basically, I've got a nickel or so into this of my own accord. I didn't have to donate, but I always do that to at least help out because I am making something from this. So again, eleven ninety nine. nothing's going to break the bank here, but they sell over and over and over and over and over again. It's a given on some things. As long as you don't mind taking a, a price in this range, you can sell many of them. Many people are only looking for the higher dollar items. Those are few and far between, and you're just not going to roll up on those all the time. I do roll up on quite a few, but nowhere near enough to make that my bread and butter, I would rather have a bunch of, of fallback stuff that will always sell and that I can sell across the board without issue. It's nothing to store this. I can store hundreds of these in one bin. The paper items, I can store thousands of those in one tiny little box. So they're rather easy categories across the board. Easy to ship, wrap it up in plastic, wrap it up in cardboard, and pop a label onto it. It's nothing to these types of items. You've got moments, just a few minutes total, into listing, photographing, and then wrapping up and shipping any of these items. So it's really a really good investment. You get a bunch of these. You can sell them over and over again. So... Now, the next one here is an insert, kind of like modern day ones. In the 70s, when Star Wars came out and Battlestar Galactica, Close Encounters, Wonder Bread would stick trade cards, one card in each loaf of bread. Now, this same promotional uh, aspect was around back in the 1870s, even, all the way up into this modern day age. Now, this is for Libix. It's a bullion company. They make beef bullion and chicken bullion and things along that line. Each package had one of these cards inserted in it. 
So you had to collect and get enough and to put the set together. Most of their sets are six cards. This is the precursor to modern day trading cards in general. This is where they started from the numbered cards. They all had numbers on them back then as well. This is an 1880s original. Now on something like this, I took 45 bucks for it. I put them up high because some sets can go for some good money. And then the average price is 45 to say 75 for most of these sets. I've had hundreds. I've probably got about 100 sets from this company up right now. There's probably roughly close to 1,000 sets of cards that this company issued by varieties and things because some of them are in foreign languages, whether it be French, German, or English, you can find them in many different languages. So this is the bread and butter. This is where a majority of our money comes from. Sure, we may sell a $1,000 plus item, you know, at least once a month or, you know, more than that, depending on it. But these items outweigh those because we sell so many of them. The store I'm showing you that this sold out of, we've got roughly, I want to say 27,000 active items in it. And obviously we're selling, so we constantly put stuff up. Constantly listing stuff is a big plus for this because when you list stuff, you usually sell 3 to 5%, or at least we do, of whatever we list the very same day we list it. Day in and day out, if we list every day, 3 to 5% on average. Some days it's 10, 20%. Other days it's a little less, just a couple percentage points. But we always sell something that we just listed that same day within hours usually. Many times it pays for our entire labor for that day, whatever we sold that we just listed. So this is just our bread and butter. The takeaway on this is don't think that these little items aren't going to be worth your time. If it doesn't take long to list, they can sit there. You've got the money available. They don't cost much. You might be able to flip way more of these than you would a high dollar item. You also may not be able to find these high dollar items. Now they're getting to be fewer and far between finding them. You know, it's just the way it is. Things are drying up in some categories and some areas like clothing and things like that. Most categories are still viable depending on your abilities yourself. So anyway, that's what I have for you today. Well, there you are. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts on this. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.